be the remix version he uh, was booked on suspicion of a misdemeanor lewd conduct he uh, was released later the same day after posting five hundred dollars bail according to the police a court arraignment is set for may 5th let's do it hey kids what time is it There's a cat butt in my face I don't want to get up Face the human race I take a shower I take a pee I drink some coffee Watch some TV But nothing seems to keep my eyes open Nothing seems to get my blood flowing I called up a friend of mine And asked what lights are fire on There is one other participant in the conference he he Please announce yourself advice to heart I bought myself an FM radio now every weekday starts with a visit from the morning disaster show and now I spell relief R-A-Y-L-Y-T-L-E Woman, person, camera, TV. Yeah, I did it. Welcome, everybody. It is the Ray Lytle Morning Show. I'm Ray, along with the lovely Nick Miner. Hi, Nick. Nick Talk. Hi, how are you? How are you? Uh, I'm tired. Dude, I am. I'm exhausted. I, this is. I look like garbage. I got it. I didn't. I was I couldn't fall asleep. I didn't but I bet I didn't go to sleep till after three o'clock last night. Is that, oh, that sucks. Is that bizarre? It's insane. I could That's insane. I could not uh fall asleep. And it's this is uh this is just one of um um uh, one of those mornings. And I've never, I haven't had a morning like this since, uh, I can't even remember. Where like, uh, you, don't wanna, you know what I mean? It's like, this is probably, this is the first time I can honestly say I don't even feel that much like uh, doing the show, you know? 
I I really don't. I literally, you know, well, since we started doing this in April, um, I've never had a day where I'm just like, ugh, I'd be better off just not even doing the show. Except I think today might be might be day. It might be you know the day where uh, I probably should have skipped. Right before we went live, okay, yeah, I can get in the studio. And right before we go live, one of my cats takes a dump. It's permeating the entire... Oh, I hate that. Dude, everything smells. My cat's not even a year oh. old, and it's at 9.30 every, 9.30 every night. It smells like death. Oh, so at least it's regular. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My cat. It, but that's just at the same time my dog wants to go out too. Oh my god! All my pets want to poop at the same time. At least the dog never wants to. At least my my dog n- never does it in the house. I, I've never our our dogs never had an accident in the house. Oh, lucky you! But I'm telling yeah, you, lucky you, I'm telling you, the cat is. Uh, it's disgusting. <laughs> Ugh. And, I, and all, 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 like, all I want to do is go cover it up. But, you know, now we're broadcasting. It's like once the show starts, I'm sort of trapped. You know, like, there's... At least, at least get yourself a, yeah. a thing of Glade. I always, spray. I always have, like, the Itchy Pickle song, you know, Lesbian Rocker, or one of those, one of those songs that... I, I could throw on in case I need an emergency bathroom visit. You know what I mean? <laughs> I always have something like that, but oh, I mean, I don't know. This I don't know what I'm going to do. I got to wait. I'm just waiting for this this cat poop smell to uh, to dissipate. <laughs> it's just disgusting. Anyway, sometimes it just lingers. Yeah, yeah, I, and you, and you know, and you you can't you can't uh, dismiss it. I mean. Literally every everything um, everything uh, you do is surrounded by the oh, yeah. the smell of the cat waste. Oh, it's just disgusting. And you would think turning on the fans would help, but yeah. whenever I turn on the fans, all it does is just blow the poop stink throughout the entire yeah. house. Yeah. It doesn't keep it in one room. Oh, it's just horrible. Yeah, so I'm, I'm oh. going through. So I'm hoping. I'm hoping at some point it wears off here. My eyes are burning. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what this cat ate, but. You you know it's a good one if your eyes are burning. I don't know which one it is. It's usually, it's usually our newest cat that does it, but it could be, uh, I say it's the baby cat, but the cat that my daughter found um, last October. Oh, it's probably the baby cat. Yeah. yeah, baby cat poop is like baby oh. human baby poop. Oh, it's it's disgusting. special. Yeah, it's it's god awful. <laughs> uh, In fact, I may just go ahead and put a diaper on my cat right now. Uh, <laughs> that's cat. funny with just, that. Just to start, just to stop the cat, you're gonna cat diaper diapers. It up. Let me know how that works. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, we are here. Uh, it is. Uh, Ray Lytle's Morning Disaster. Phone number 815-414-2125. Have we gotten our apology letters yet? We I have not. I haven't gotten anything. No, he's been he's been okay. very silent. Uh-huh. After blowing, That's all I'm gonna mention. So. Yeah, after he blew it off. Move on to something else. So he's uh he's of course nowhere to be found. Uh-huh. And I'm sure we'll be he nowhere. He must not be named now. Until I'm sure he's going to remain nowhere to be found until his ex-wife calls the show. <laughs> you know, she'll just call. Uh, to, she'll call to check in, and then he'll call, even though she means nothing to him. That's what he keeps saying. Right. Uh, then he'll call in, so having to rebut what she said. Because even though she means nothing to him, uh, that's when he always has to uh, call and make his comments. So, no, no, no apology letter yet. 
Because I don't think we'll get anything from him. Anyway, uh, it is uh, the morning disaster. So, Doran, what did you do all weekend? Uh, everything. <laughs> well, at least it wasn't like last week. You had that storm last weekend that almost, you know. Yeah. Um, no, let's see. Uh, found out at 945 Thursday night that uh, my son's ball team had the game up in mini air. I don't know if you know where that is, but it's nowhere near here. Um, so that I worked Friday, came home, packed things up, drove 85 miles. Uh, we fought pretty hard, but we lost. So our season's over. And then Saturday, I got up early and I went and helped my best friend growing up, the uh, one that grew up across the street from me. Her parents had an auction. They sold the house. They sold everything. They're just downsizing and moving to Springfield. So that was kind of rough and emotional um, and standing out in the heat all day Saturday. Um, Saturday night, I and you, don't and remember. You did, I you did I that for passed out in a pool raft. You did mm -hmm. that for a friend that you grew up with? Yeah, I do remember Linda. Yeah, but I'm saying, how, nice, like, how often do you see her? Uh, we still talk. We talk more than we, we actually see each other. Oh, but yeah, we're still, we're, the older we're getting, the tighter we're becoming again. So yeah. There's nobody. There's nobody. As somebody that I grew up with, if they call me and say, hey, my, uh, my parents are, uh, uh, they're getting old and they want to blah, 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 blah. Will you come over and help? I would be like, F you. <laughs> I would be. Way. I'm, I'm serious. I, there's no one. There's no one. I'm just, I'm saying you're a much better friend than me. There's no one that I would help. Well, see, you had siblings and she and I are both only children. And we are, we're only like six months apart in age. So we function like siblings. So she's the closest thing that I have to a sister. So. Yeah, I, I, be honest. I just didn't even have to ask. She just told me when the auction was going to be, and I'm like, I'll be there. So, but even even if one of my siblings called and said, "Hey, my parents are getting old. <laughs> we got to we got to put one of my parents in a house. Will you come?" I would be like, "No," and they'd go, "Wait a minute, they're your parents too," and I'd be like, "Oh, <laughs> I got to be honest. Oh, right. um, no, there's I just uh, good for you, Nick. Would you help out like?" <laughs> Because Nick is, uh, out of uh, out of us, he's the closest to high school. So he's, you know, he's younger. Would There's you probably three to four people that I would drop what I was doing to go help some help Re them out or anything that you were friends with in high well, in high school that you would help out. Yeah. Yep. Wow. There's nobody. There's nobody from high school that. I'm starting to question myself how bad I am. I am. <laughs> There's no. You're a little crotchety. I think you're getting up there, Raymond, because you're getting a little. I just little salty. I I'm serious. I there's no I one. Think maybe maybe two of them. I might might come up come up with an excuse to yeah. not do it, but I'll try to do it. I would couple an excuse with every single one. There's no one that I wouldn't come up with an excuse for. Like I, I just developed IBS. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't even. I can't, I can't, on cue. I can't, I can't, on I can't cue. move. I can't move heavy objects. How many people that you went? This is a question for everyone. How many people that you went to high school with know your phone number? Because I'll be honest. Oh my god. I'll be honest. There's people. I think. Oh wow. I don't think anyone. I don't, I don't think I've given my phone number to anyone that I went to high school with. None of them. Well, some of them are my clients now. So, you know, your people that you know, you that's, to, that's different. People you went to high school with are your clients. Yeah. So you still, mm -hmm. you still see them. I do. I do still see them. I'm doing, I'm doing the popular girls here now. <laughs> Wow. So yeah. You, you see her the ones regular. that were a little uppity, the cheerleaders and all that, you know, yeah, they want good hair. They come to me now. So that's crazy. <laughs> the ch it's kind of the funny. Chat, the chat from Brent. Ray won't even go find tapes in his own garage if <laughs> he were to find out. 
Rocky, Rocky, <laughs> sent, Rocky sent me a message this morning saying that he wants to come by the house tomorrow and uh, pick up those tapes. So ah, well, I need to get a hold of him for a haircut then. Yeah, you should. You should get hold of him. Uh, or, or, we'll wait. He'll be on in a little bit. Um, or I should probably tell my wife because my wife will freak out. You know, <laughs> and it, it will somehow be my we fault. Have in the garage. Yeah. We have company. <laughs> what it'll is be, that? It'll be my fault. Oh. That you know. Why are there people here? Yeah. So. Oh. I I I don't know. I just there's no one I went to high school with that, and I'm just using high school example. High school, college. Uh, I think my friends are are the people that I either did the disaster with then, or that I do the disaster with now. I think that's my oh, only. Yeah. Those are my only. Friends. <laughs> those are my only friends. Ray, I'm cleaning my basement this weekend. You want to come over and help? No. No, and I love you. You're, you're pro- Nick might be one of my closest <laughs> friends, but I would I wouldn't lift a finger to help him do anything. <laughs> of course, I I do expect him to help me. I mean I I, I mean I I, I am yes I'll I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll I'll drive the hour and fifteen minutes I am... to come help find tapes. <laughs> <laughs> I re- I think I'm a horrible person. I really do. Oh my god. But I think we are, we're all horrible people. I mean, come on. No, in our own right, in of course. In, in our own way, we're all horrible people. I think the fact that you know, I think the fact that I um won't that I don't talk to anybody I went to high school with. I know it. I know I'm a horrible people, but I, but I'm not the only one. I'm not the whole, I'm not the only horrible person that doesn't talk to people that I went to high school with. I think a bunch of us are in that same boat. Yeah, like, we've hopefully evolved since high school. I, yeah, I've yet mean. to be sent an invitation to a reunion. You've never been to a high school <laughs> reunion. High school reunions are fun. They, they're actually fun. Uh, but I'm just. I've been and I haven't been. They're fun. But if you go, there's nothing life changing. And if you don't go, there's nothing life changing. You know Exactly. It won't kill you. I'm not missing not out on anything. anything. But I, I people with the high school with I don't even <clears throat> I don't know how many of them know my phone number. I gotta be honest with you. With all this Trump <laughs> bullshit and this mask stuff and Facebook, I'm not sure I wanna be friends with a lot of them. Because <laughs> a lot of people that I went to high school with are the ones that are, uh, that Dr. Fauci's a goddamn communist. There's a lot of that stuff. It's from the people I went to high school with. Well, I ran into a girl that I was friends with in high school, but I'm not anymore. I was uh, out running errands for my mom when I was down in Carlinville on Saturday and ran into her at a store, didn't recognize her because she had the face mask on. And she said, hey, Dee, what's up? And I turned around, and she dropped the mask, and she goes, I think we should wear these things forever. And she yeah. smiled and was missing two teeth. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I, think, we I, well, I think we should. At least, at least she was sensible enough to be wearing it. She was, I, 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 I'm, I'm hearing it. Uh, uh, I'm hearing it. It's like I'm reliving the past. Yeah, I'm hearing an yeah. echo. Yeah, what is that? I think it was Rocky's mic. I don't know what was going on. Oh, uh, could have been. Yeah, yeah. So, at least she was wearing the mask. Uh, yeah, she was. Because yeah, she was. <laughs> it seems that I have a lot of. Uh, you couldn't see some of the people that I went to high school with because they'd be wearing their Trump paraphernalia. <laughs> so I'm just I'm saying that when you look at. Facebook, there's probably a good reason why, why you, you don't associate with some people. Not that you dislike them. And, and I, I don't I don't begrudge anyone simply for who they vote for. But, you know, but uh, there's some of it is just I'd rather not be around it, you know. Now, anyway, we are here. Uh, the phone is working now. 815-414-2125 if you want to get hold of us. 
We are here. So give us a call. All right. Uh, I see Rocky has joined us. How are you doing, Rocky? Great. How are you doing? We are fantastic. I was talking about how you sent me a message saying you're going to come by my house tomorrow. You were you were talking about uh, moving uh, things and how you don't want to help <clears throat> help your friends. I was nice enough when I moved from the one apartment in Springfield, like uh, right down the road to the other one on Seven Pines. I had uh, your uh, I had Bodine help. Yeah. And uh, a couple other people and uh, Nikki helped. I and uh, wow. you could tell that uh, Nikki was getting a little frustrated and she would just, uh, you know, she kept kind of hemming and humming around. And then we finally were moving this couch outside uh, and we get outside and in the middle of moving it, she just decides to do this. Oh, oh and falls back the fakest fall I've ever seen. I don't know if she remembers that or Bodine remembers that, but yeah. You're saying while you were moving a couch. Big Paul and Nikki, yes. Nikki. Big Paul and Nikki. People that were with us. Yeah. If, uh, people that were with us that were normally nice, even they were like, come on. <laughs> yeah, you got to really, if you're going to fake a fall, you got to really got to sell it. Nikki fake fell. Yeah, she. N- Nikki fake oh, yeah. fell out. That was, that was not real. She fake fell out of the show today. Just to let you know where she is. Oh, okay. <laughs> she she fake fell her way out of doing the show. I'm pretty sure she's snoring right now. By the way, if you if you're moving, I would have found a way to sit on the couch. Yes, you did. <laughs> I believe you were the reason Bodine was there. <laughs> That's what you contributed. <laughs> yes. My my contribution was sending my brother by proxy to help you move. Right. You had not done that he uh he wouldn't have been there to help oh my god (laughs) that's how that's how i do it that's how i do business come on now no way Uh, no i just i'm shocked that you actually doran i'm shocked you you actually helped like a longtime friend i think it's wonderful that you did that well thanks but i'm saying there's no way (laughs) that i would have done it you know i for me, I, I would have found every excuse in the world to not help people. And, and I, why is that? I don't why? know. It's me. I don't know. I think I'm a horrible person. I really do. <laughs> but I think I like the fact <laughs> right. that well, you know, quick answer what it boils down to. I, I like <laughs> the fact that someone in my circle is nice enough to help out other people. That's what I'm saying. I like the fact uh-huh. that you did. I would never do it. Never in a million years. Would I do it? But I'm really glad that you would. Oh, well, because I think that somehow right. makes me nicer. Oh, because you're my friend too. <laughs> well, no, yeah, yeah. Because you appreciate someone else's niceness. Yeah. That by proxy makes you a nice person. Well, no, I, at least here's what it, you appreciate it, someone else's effort. So that's sort of like an effort yes. on your own part. And here's the other thing: the is, effort of appreciating the effort. Yes, and and I also think. That it shows how I aspire to be a better person. It's like yes. I would, I would like to be more Doran-like. I, I would like to think, I would like to think that there's a a, a day, a future, a future day, <laughs> where where I actually appreciate li- someone else's niceness. Yeah, that by proxy makes you a nice person. Well, yes, where where I, there's a day. Somehow in the uh, in the future, where I am actually doing some nice things, and I think that that's and that's as far as the effort goes is that fantasy of the future. Yeah, I, that's <laughs> me. Fantasy does take effort. Yeah, I think oh. I think that I think that my my desire is to one day be mentally suitable and so mentally healthy that I'm willing to help other people in their, well, that's a goal. In their time of, <laughs> of need. You know, that's, that's where I hope I am. And one day, one day, who knows? You scoff now, but you never we know. know. We all know. <laughs> <laughs> we know how this is. <laughs> One day I might I might be the guy that 
someone oh. says, hey, uh, come help, and I might be the one that shows up. You never know. I, I wish. back up. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah. saying, I yeah. wish I was a better person. That's all. And I, I aspire <laughs> to be. So please don't let me ever give up my aspirations is all I'm asking. Like, you, you know, <laughs> let people know, Ray, you should at least want to be here. Or you should at least want to be there. That's all I ask. Because that way I always We just a, want you to think about wanting to be here. Yeah, that way I always have a goal. I always have a, you know. Baby steps. Yeah, that's how it works. Mm. <laughs> Uh, so someone could ask you to do something and you say, no, I, I can't. I'm yes. angry. I'm hateful. I don't give a shit. But I know a girl. Yeah. And she's really sweet and she might just help you out. Well, I, I can give <laughs> here. Maybe I can go as far don't as. Don't give out my phone number. One for of, the love of God. One of these days, I'll actually be far enough along in my own mental health to where I will call someone. Or, you know what I mean? Like somebody will put on, uh, oh, uh, so and so died, or, uh, or, uh, oh, I I need help because I'm gonna be doing blah blah blah, to where I will at the very least call someone. And and help them out. I'm hoping. Like someone says, there. yeah, someone says, oh, I need this or I need that, and I will call and uh, and help them out. That's my goal. Baby steps. So, Rocky, you are coming up. So, Doran, you wanted to. You wanted yeah. To, so it's like your effort in that would be to probably like unlock the garage. Yeah. That's like helping. Yeah. <laughs> or having someone unlock the garage. Yeah. I, my wife. Uh, my wife was yelling at me about she will she wanted to uh, uh, find some stuff. That's what she was yelling at me before uh, when I said that you you might come over. So I'll probably tell her so she can uh, so she can get some stuff ready. I think that's what she wanted yes. to do. Yes. You tell her so she can get some stuff ready. Well, but but see <laughs> <laughs> Well, like she says, she goes, "I got to find those videotapes." And well, she probably knows where they are better than you do. Yeah, well, I, I see I can see them. I see where oh, they are. Well. I literally, when I walk inside my garage, after I park my car, I walk inside my garage. And when I walk inside my garage, I can see them. Or at least I see one of the boxes of them. And I imagine the other one has to be close by. You know. So I, I know where they are, so I can at least point Rocky in the direction <laughs> to find the box. Right. <laughs> and the... The video or the, the cassette tapes shouldn't be that far from there, so you know. Is this like a huge box of videotapes, like a no, hundred tapes? Or... No, it's a uh, um, it's a collection of a bunch of tapes, and it's an uh, uh it's a, like a like a clear thing, like a Tupperware type looking thing. Like okay. a big Rubbermaid. Right, Rubbermaid. Like a, a, a big Rubbermaid thing. Yeah. Yes, it's like a, there's a, a couple of them, I think. Or a few. Okay. You know, <laughs> load them in the trunk, you'll be fine. And right, the, I just didn't know if I needed to bring a truck or a... Uh... <laughs> well, and the, the audio cassettes are in, are in a big Rubbermaid thing. They're, yeah. all, they're all celebrated. They were celebrated by years at one point. But I think in one of my moves, one of my brothers uh, just dumped a bunch of years all together. So I don't know how that I don't know how that's working. So anyway, uh, it'll be easy. It'll be good to see you. But Doran, you wanted to find out about the haircut thing. Yeah. What time are you going to be in town? Oh, I thought you were too busy for that. We can do that some other time. <laughs> okay. Like a oh, long no, list of. Uh... Yeah, you've got another. Okay, well, yeah, I've got time tomorrow afternoon. I mean, just let me know. Oh, okay. You know how to get a hold of me. Yeah, it does. Yes. I'll be. I mean, know. how long does it take to do a man's hair? I look at Rocky's hair. What's it take? It can't be too much to that. Well, it's just, I, 35, 40 minutes. 
I mean, to do it right. And I, I don't know that I've ever cut Rocky's hair. So it's like doing a new client, no. there's consultation involved. So yeah, it'll take a little bit. It's just the hair on your head, right? <laughs> oh, for God's yeah. sake. <laughs> it, it's just uh. here. It's 35 minutes? Yep. Does it take that long when you do mine? No, because you normally don't want to shampoo and you're always in a hurry. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah. <laughs> so, no, if you don't want to shampoo, if you don't want a hot shave. You know, hot oh, no, shave, I don't even then... shampoo. I'd okay. love it. You would right. give me a hot shave? On your neck, yeah. Oh, oh that, that's But you're always in a hurry. Always in a rush. Really? Too busy, you. Too busy, you. Yeah, I've never, I've never had a hot shave. <laughs> that sounds like, is that a euphemism for something? Uh, hello, <laughs> good morning, you're on the morning disaster. That's a code word. <laughs> hey, bud. Hey, it's my little brother, Goose. What's up, Goose? Okay, not much. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Rocky. Hi, Nick. What's going on, brother? How's it going? Hey, good, good, good. Hey, I just want to say, um, this is the show. Love the show. First time caller. <laughs> hey, uh, bud, I'll be by today to help you get those. Oh, you're going to help get them ready for Rocky? Yeah, help me. Oh, come on over. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, 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 I'll come over this afternoon after I'm done. Then you could find, uh, then we got to find the, the videotapes and, uh, you know, just pull them to the side and stuff for Rocky. And then we can just have some audio tapes. He can grab whatever he wants. There you All go. right, I'll do that for you. And then you do something for my wife. Sound good. What, what, Bye, what, bud. What, what, <laughs> what, <laughs> later. <laughs> what? what? Oh, that's the deal has been cast. Yeah, so obvi obviously, <laughs> here's here's how that works. Obviously, his wife needs something done. And that was his... See, everyone should be as smart as my brother. And <laughs> he's he's probably been waiting. So all the lighters, all the lighters are like this. <laughs> <laughs> like he was waiting to find his, his in. And the inn is obviously his wife needs something that I need to do. And uh, now he's found his way, you know, to get the inn. Because now I'm trapped. Uh, so I'm not, I don't know what it is, but. Uh, all right. Oh, well. Well, at least he's going to go there and. You know, at least he's gonna go and gather all the the tapes up, so they'll be here. They'll be here for you, Rocky. You got that going for you. Great. <clears throat> and uh, now there'll be less work to do in the garage, so you will have time to get that haircut if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, less work for me, so you know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh... less work for your wife as well. Yeah, my wife will be happy. Did you guys... All the uh, other people that you were going to give jobs to and involve in this, hopefully they'll be happy. Did you guys see <laughs> who died over the weekend? Who? Did you see who died over the weekend? We, we were no. just talking about uh, one of his movies. What, one of his movies? Remember uh, we were talking about Enter the Dragon? We were talking about Bruce Lee? Yeah. Oh, we were talking about him. Who Who is... Who died? That was in. That was in. Uh, oh, John Saxon. John Saxon. Oh, yeah, that's right. I was talking about Regis Philbin. No. But John. <laughs> John Saxon. But John Saxon died <laughs> too. You're right. Street dad. Yes, that's right. Yeah, no, I was talking about Regis. Regis Philbin. Yeah, he had that scene in Enter the Dragon <laughs> where Bruce Lee steps out. Well, I he's just, like, hey, I, come on. I, they do this whole like New York. Chinese. Regis Philbin had moves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Regis Philbin was 88 years well, it was old. Seven, it was 73, so he was a lot younger. But Regis Philbin didn't do, I Huge mean. Huge afro, though. Regis Philbin did nothing but host television shows. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Like, he, he never did anything else. I mean, he wasn't. I in... never really. I didn't really know who he was until a lot later on, like when he started doing like the. I guess it was who who wants to be a millionaire or something. I didn't really yeah. know who he was, but I guess he's been around since. Well, he. 50s or, he or was whatever. he he was a host of just a New York television show. 
for a long time. It was he was a uh, he was a host of a St. Louis <clears throat> show for a while. Oh yeah, he, he was flew back and forth on KMOX. Yeah, really. He, well, that's what he did. He hosted those local shows, and he hosted a bunch of. He would fly from New York to the city, where he hosted stuff, and he would do them. And they put they put them on different nights. So he had a chance. He would basically do the same it was show. Ryan Seacrest of his time. Yeah, he was. You know, it's a good absolutely. example. He was Ryan Seacrest. And then older in life, he started hosting the Regis and Kathy Lee show. And then when they fired Kathy Lee, it became the Regis and Kelly Lee show or whatever. And then they finally fired him. And uh, I think he more retired, though. I don't think he was. Was he fired? Well, if you remember, was he like 90 or something? If you remember, no, he was. And when he was like in his 70s. Uh, they said he quit, but then he was like, I didn't quit. They fired me. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. He was the one who spoke up. And uh, he said the reason that he, he didn't, goes, I don't want to be fired. I'll, I'll die. And look at that. It took a while, but he did eventually die. If, if there's not, <laughs> think about it. If there's, if you have no reason to live and being on, uh, you know, being on television is your reason to live, you wouldn't want to die either. Or you wouldn't want to be fired either. He seemed to like working, you know. I got to be honest. Look at me, I I like hosting a show. They fired me from the radio. I start doing it on the internet. I'm like, fuck them. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. That's that's. Yeah, how... I just joined in one day. Uh-huh. I got fired and just was like, well, here's a web show because you <laughs> because you like broadcasting. I'm just saying. Right. Regis is a guy. Who liked broadcasting? He liked to do it. 88 years old. He finally died over the weekend. John Saxon, of course, also dying. I think he was 83. Really? So he was another. Yeah, he was uh, was also the dad in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, the first one. He was in the first Nightmare on Elm Street. I didn't know that. Yeah, he was he was the father. That's um, some people might remember him from that. And so, and so was uh, who? Uh, there was a the favorite. father. He was, the father was also the policeman, the main policeman. Who was? Uh, there was also another famous actor that was in that. Who was it? Johnny. Johnny Depp. Depp. Was, it, was it Johnny Depp? Was in that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was the teenage one of the teenagers. Was he one of the young guys getting laid in it? Uh, no, he was the nice guy. You know how they have the rock, the tough, mean rock star kind of guy, and then the nice guy. He was the, he nice, was the guy. nice guy. How bizarre! He was uh, killed in his bed, sleeping. In the chat room on Facebook, Kathy says Olivia De Havilland died at 104 years old. Olivia De Havilland was still alive. Yes, and she is the last member of Gone with the Wind, major player in Gone with the Wind, to have been alive. So now, no one in that movie. Uh, is alive, well, including the Confederacy. Thank God. But I'm saying that. But I'm bomb. Thank you. But Olivia to have is alive and well and burden. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That, that, that's true. A lot of people have said about their southern heritage. My southern heritage is being shot upon <laughs> by them wanting to take away my flag. It's like, wait, weren't you born in my Illinois? brother again? My brother and his Confederate heritage meme. What? Born in Illinois, mother from Michigan. <laughs> weren't you? Yeah, weren't you Confederate born heritage. in Illinois? Just, <laughs> yeah. Just because you like Leonard Skinner doesn't give you southern heritage. Yeah. Well, it's it's more they like Leonard, they like Leonard Skinner and they don't like black people. I've noticed. Just from the, the Facebook post, that that's what's going on there. But yeah. they're torn, and that Curtis Lowe song comes on. They don't know what to do. It's like skip over that, and skip over that one with they're throwing the gun in the river. Skip over that one too. <laughs> Leonard Skinner songs. Did you very s- nice special? Keep up. Did you? Uh, <laughs> did you guys see the Florida Marlins baseball team? 12, no. <laughs> 12 people. And it, and baseball started again. And they've all been 
uh, it's been perfect. I mean, it has really been great. They have all, you know, followed the rules and everything for COVID. Except one team, a bunch of them decided to go out, and now, like, 12 to 15 players have caught COVID. So the, instead of it's a man from Florida, it's a team from Florida. Yeah, it's the Florida Marlins team has caught COVID. They were just playing the Philadelphia Phillies. So now all the Phillies team is now going to have to undergo quarantine. Uh, they just started the season. It was so good having it going. And now they're probably going to, you know, Major League Baseball is probably going to, I'm not sure how it's going to It's It sucks because it's great having it back, but I think they're going to have to shut it down again. Because of these dumbasses. And doesn't it figure that it's Florida? It's always Florida. All right. And then <laughs> then the, the NBA is getting ready to start, right? The NBA has taken it so far. They actually created this thing called the bubble. The what? It's called the bubble. And, and what it okay. is, is it's, it's where all the NBA players are staying at this resort on Disney World. And all the games are going to be played in Disney World. So they put the NBA players, they sort of put them in this one resort so that they, the, the theory is if none of them have COVID, then they can't pass it, right? That's the theory. And there's even, <laughs> guard, there's even guards and stuff, so they keep track of when these guys, if, if anybody leaves, you know what I mean? They try to keep track of all that stuff. And they haven't had any, you know, it's been, they've been uh, practicing and, and scrimmaging. And the league's supposed to start this week. All right. And then there's Lou Williams of the L.A. Clippers. Who said that he had a family emergency and he had to go to a funeral in Atlanta. So the league said, okay, we'll let you go as long as you quarantine and you stay Ooh. away. You stay away from people except for the funeral. So they let him go. And then they found a video of him being in clubs. What? <laughs> It was like a New Orleans type funeral. It was one of those happy funerals. Everybody's dancing. No. <clears throat> Techno music's playing. We're celebrating life. He went. <laughs> oh, for shit's sake. He went and. Caskets around here somewhere. He partied. And then a rapper named Jack Harlow, this guy takes a picture at a strip club. He takes a picture of a strip club saying, yo, I'm just partying here at this strip club. And guess who's standing next to him in the strip club? Right. This Lou Williams guy. Well, I hope this rapper gets popular by this. I hope the rapper gets popular by the photo because he's not going anywhere in rap with a name like Jack yeah. Harlow. <laughs> <laughs> Rap master Jack Carlo, everybody. So Rap the beat. This guy has now he went after he got done for the strip club and stuff, claiming he was going to some funeral. He goes to the strip club and then they say, Were you in the strip club? And he goes, I wasn't in the strip club. They go, We got pictures of you in the strip club. He goes, Oh, I did? oh he goes, my god. Oh, I just stopped by to get some food. <laughs> oh, you said strip club. <laughs> Not a chicken strip. So though. yeah, but maybe they have great chicken strips. I don't know. <laughs> they might. Because I don't know. Claimed, like New York great strips. Great. There you go. Pop sandwiches. He 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 claimed, he went there because uh, he said he had to get some food. I thought the naked breasts meant that they didn't put batter on the chicken. <laughs> I, I didn't know there was. I didn't know there was naked women there. I had no idea. So then he returned to the bubble. When he got back and he told everybody, I didn't go anywhere. All I went was at the funeral. And they said, okay, we got to quarantine you. I gotta, we got to quarantine you uh, for so many days. Thank God they did that because all these pictures and stuff have come up since he was quarantined. 
And he's like, oh, I forgot about that time I went partying. And uh, <laughs> and then I went and got some food at that strip club. He forgot about all that stuff, he says. He's got oh that God. strip club COVID, too. That's a, that's a special kind. Uh, so they have decided the NBA. It's like the glitter. You just can't get rid of it. The NBA right. has decided that he is going to go on a uh, 10 day quarantine, or, and then he is going to miss two games, and they're going to fight. He's going to lose $150,000 in salary. Good. All because he wanted to, you know, go to his strip club. The NBA is trying their best. They're trying their best to keep COVID from hitting the NBA. However, <sighs> They're doing it. They're doing it in Orlando, Florida. Where's the last place on earth you should put, you know, a bunch of people you don't want to get COVID? You got to put yeah, them like places like that. Montana where there's no yes. one there. You know, exactly. The National Women's Soccer League, they played in Utah. They had zero. They had zero cases of COVID. They put the tournaments in a place where nobody lives. It was in Utah. Yep. Brilliant. And there's nothing to do. There's no strip clubs. <laughs> yes. There's no, there's no <laughs> late night entertainment. There's no fun. There's no fun in Utah. That's where they should have put it. I I just don't understand. That's their state slogan. <laughs> the state there's slogan. no fun. <laughs> the state, CYOB. <laughs> state, state slogan is there's no fun in Utah. That's what'll keep everybody. In line. Yeah, so the NBA, I'm just wondering when it's all going to collapse. I just, it's, and they're, playing, they're not helping themselves. I mean, they're just being ridiculous. They're playing in Disney World. Stupid. It's a section of Disney World that's closed, but it's close by where everyone's, work, everyone's wa walking around sick. Stupid. It's Ugh. Florida. The land of dirt and germs. Exactly. It's a germy world after all. But Loud, the, sticky, expensive children. And remember, Burgers, if you're ever in Atlanta, if you're ever in Atlanta, the best place to get ribs is uh, the strip club. That's where you get your food. <laughs> that's what, at least that's what I'm going to tell my wife next time I go. I've like, been wow, to, you can see all of her ribs. I, she I, needs to eat something, <laughs> type thing. <laughs> and to make it bright, too. I've been to Atlanta, and I liked it. I didn't go to any strip clubs, though. I'm sort of wishing I, you know, would have... Uh, I saw Gone with the Wind in a theater in Atlanta. That's what I would have. We, oh, wow. we went on that radio thing, and you guys went wherever. Yeah. You went, you went to a... You went and saw Gone with the Wind when we were in Atlanta? When you guys went off on your sports thing, I, you guys went to a game or something. Yeah, we went to go so see the, the, we Gone with the, the Wind had their anniversary, and I went went and saw Gone with the Wind in a theater in Atlanta on Beach Street. Rocky. Street. Everyone's going to start thinking you're gay if you're going to see Gone with the Wind in Atlanta. What's wrong with you? It's three and a half hours long, and everybody knows the story of Gone with the Wind, right? Well, I was a half hour late, and they didn't want to sell me a ticket. It's like, I just... <laughs> What? Sir, we don't want you to find out who won what? this war. The half hour's already played, sir. You're, you'll miss the half hour, and then it's not going to play again, so. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you, might not know, you might not know who's fighting in this civil war. Right. Uh, I need some backstory. I've, I've never seen this movie before. You know, or by the way, I had, it ever. I had no idea that you went to go see Gone with the Wind while well, we went to I that baseball. I think you did. Well, you we... I know Sean knew. How did I know? It was not... the one where it was you, Sean, and the consultant. Yeah, and, and my wife. Yeah. Yeah, we all went. Uh... You guys all something. I don't remember what. We went to a game or something. Yeah, it was Atlanta Braves were playing somebody, so we went to go watch the game. I'm like, go to a game with these, especially the one guy. I'll go. I'd rather literally go sit and watch Gone with the fucking Wind. I'll tell you what. And that's what I did. Sean Ballant was so annoying at that game. <laughs> and I swear to God, he was so annoying in that game. Everyone, uh, everyone left. I'm serious. Like, 
my wife was he trying to network and hand out business cards and my wife jeff the consultant uh uh, there was somebody else with us too. I can't remember. The, uh, I can't I remember. The, Jim, Jim was probably there, wasn't he? I don't know if it was Jim or, or not. I I don't remember. I know that they I got up. Jim being there. They got up and uh, and and left. And I remember I, I just kept telling Sean to, "Hey, you you want to go? You should go check out the blah blah blah." I can't remember what it was, but finally he left, and then I was sitting by myself. I was the happiest. Uh, 20 minutes of the game. Yeah, I was, I was sitting in a the theater by myself for three hours. I was <laughs> <laughs> the, the best After part of the game. on the plane, and yeah, I was ready for some uh, space. <laughs> that was the best part of the game, is when everybody was gone. Yeah, but no, I was good. I didn't, I had no idea you went to go see Gone with the Wind. You're saying Sean knew, he never told me. Yeah. I caught a cab and went and took <laughs> And Olivia de Havilland does, just died, 104 years old. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm wondering now if the NBA and eh, Major League Baseball, I don't even know if they're going to – I don't know if they're going to make it or not. But this – but Florida – NBA, there's a lot of touching, and you're, you're so – it's so uh, – um, physical, you know, where it, where they're together. It's like it's not like baseball, where everybody's kind of spread out and a runner goes around. And here's the theory: or football, though. where everybody's covered in helmets and padding and everything. And here's the theory: is if none of them have it, then they can't be spreading it around. And it does make sense, except when you have rule breakers getting it, when you have people going out and partying. Hey, the season just got started again, so let's go out and celebrate. Woo! And one of them gets COVID, then everybody gets COVID. It looks like that's what happened to the to baseball. They started playing again, and they're like, well, just having a couple drinks after the game isn't going to hurt anything. Uh, as it turns out, it does hurt things. So I don't know what's going to I don't know what's going to happen. It's interesting to sit back and watch, though. I know that. I mean, all this stuff, especially when you're you're on, uh, you know, you, you just at home hanging out and the world's passing by and yeah. all this craziness is going on. Hockey, hockey's starting at least for the St. Louis Blues on Wednesday, so that'd be interesting yeah. to see yeah. how that goes too. Uh, uh, where and they're playing? Where are they, are they playing at their home arenas or where are they playing? I can't remember. I know my wife. My wife said something about it, but I don't know where they're playing. Well, there's finally sports back. I mean, Doran, you're a baseball mom. Baseball, yes, I am. Baseball should be the sport. I mean, they play it outdoors. Mm-hmm. Play it outdoors. There's we had a season. Open we had a short air. season. Yes, they should yeah. be able to play baseball with no one getting COVID, as long as they're yep. just going to the to the field, and yep. then going and all home. Families afterwards. kind of stay yes. in their own little clumps. We don't intermat. The concession stands are not open. Well, some places they are, but we bring our own snacks and our own, you know, beverages and things like that. Um, One field that we were at, since we were actually on a school-owned field, um, it wasn't like a park or or community park or anything like that. Anyone who was not playing had to wear a mask on the field. So the umpires wore face coverings. The the base coaches wore face coverings. Um, but yeah, there's no reason why we shouldn't have. And I got I got the message from the uh, baseball coach down here saying, you know, when they canceled all, they canceled all, you know, junior high sports, fall sports. So that included baseball. But maybe there's going to be some fall ball, some travel ball. We'll see. But there's no reason. I'm just why, saying that you know. that baseball sh- should be the one sport that does it right. And look, mm-hmm. these dumbasses, you know, you you can't you can't trust the people. Which is why I have no faith. But at least we got one normal weekend. I think we're all screwed until they get this vaccine done, which God knows when that's going to be. Uh, did you yeah, see? Yeah, it's, it's become fairly obvious that you can't rely on people. You can't trust to people. Band together. Let's all get together. Be on the same page. Conquer this thing. Move on. That's not going to happen. Yeah, people are shit. You, we can't. We can't trust people. People are horrible. People are shit. You can't Isn't trust a Slipknot them. Slipknot song? 
People are. <laughs> I, I got it from somewhere. <laughs> Mud pain or something. <laughs> it was something like that. I, I got it from somewhere. All I know is that people are shit. And we can't yeah. trust them. We can't, we True can't, story. We can't trust them. Something stupid. Listen, we get... Uh, and white people forget about it. Yeah. They're so, <laughs> white people are crazy. Have you seen the videos of these, these people trying to go into Walmart without a mask? Mm-hmm. I've seen the videos that people themselves without the masks are taking, thinking they're going to be the, the hero or the superstar or whatever, only to have it turn around on them, oh and then they post God. the video anyway. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know how hard it is. Don't be an asshole. Wear a mask. Or don't go. It's a yeah, private. Go. It's really it's a it's private really difficult, company. I think, in this, delivery in this or curbside. Day. Yeah. You really hit it when you said don't be an asshole, though. I do think that's a tall request in this era of social media where being an asshole has become kind of like a contest. And we elected elected one president. The more followers I'm going to get, the more views or whatever. And everybody's trying to be an asshole. I mean, listen, I'm trying not to get political, but in the rest of the world, it's don't be an asshole is a mandate. Just people are like, oh, let's just get through. I just want to get through life. Let's just not be an asshole. Let's get through it. And in and, and France, they're, <laughs> right. like, they're like, I just want to get through life. Let's not be an asshole. You know, all over the world. In the United States, we elected one. <laughs> I mean, I just, listen, that's just how we are. So we're just not conditioned to be able to defeat this thing. And we celebrate that we elected one. Yes. Yeah. And then they want to elect them again. That's the, yeah, that's the thing. It's, we'll it's probably... the celebration of, of assholes. Yes, and we'll... you know, if you go back and watch these old movies with the villains in them, those old 80s movies, the villains would now be the heroes. No, you know? so it's Listen, like, yeah, it's, it's a celebration. And asking somebody not to be an asshole, no. In the United States, <laughs> we elected one. We'll probably elect him again. Yeah, I hope we reelected. Can I? I mean, let's be honest. Better, better get used to that right now. <laughs> the man, the man would have been the villain in every single James Bond movie. <laughs> he would have been the villain. I'll tell you where the man was. A vi- here's where, here's, here's where he's a villain. The Dukes of Hazard. He's basically Boss Hog. He's a city <laughs> slicker con artist who came to town basically and convinced all of these local people, these good, hardworking, yeah. blue collar country people. That he's for them. Yeah. And what he's doing, and it's always a scheme. It's always a whatever. But there's always a couple of country boys, the Dukes, who's got him figured out. Yeah. Holy shit, That's, Rocky. I think you nailed it. Donald, he is Boss Hog. <laughs> you're, no, you're, you're right. And you know what? And I'm telling you, when I, and I, and I know. And both of his kids are anus. Yeah. <laughs> Right or or Roscoe, I mean Edis. <laughs> Listen, all I know He's is every city slicker con artist that's ever come to town on the Andy Griffith show. Yeah, he's. It's like these people didn't pay any attention growing up watching this stuff. And not only did we elect him, but one time, I'm saying we're probably going to elect him again. Even after all the shit he has done. Uh, during the first term, we'll probably elect him again. Is there anyone on the show I think so. or anyone listening, anyone in the chat room or anything? Is there anyone that feels that, uh, I mean, you're hopeful that it's going to be the other guy, but is anybody, would anybody be surprised if he was elected again? No, At I this wouldn't. point, no. No. Uh-uh. No. None of you would be surprised. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, nobody. No, there will be, his side will have people lined up yeah. at whatever, at the polls, making sure, you know, they'll be taking days off, they'll be whatever, they'll be, it's it's a united front, and everybody else will be like, well, I don't know, I don't like Joe Biden's shoelace, I can't support <laughs> a guy that wears a ring on his second finger, you know, whatever. Yeah. So yeah, that's the difference. Well, I'm going to vote with my conscience, not out of fear. I, I sort of had a problem with the way he handled COVID, but I really don't Might like be. I really don't like black people. Or I, I sort That's of right. have a way I, I sort of have a problem with uh, 
how insensitive he is to blah, blah, blah. But you know what I really don't like? Them telling me I can't have my Confederate flag or wh- whatever it is. The man <laughs> right. is probably like going to be reelected. I would not be surprised. He's a real Christian, even though he's paid off porn yeah. stars. <laughs> Which is too bad. I'd like to go back to being a country without a cult mm. leader for a president. And I think if Joe Biden was elected, the biggest he, his reaction would be lukewarm. There'd be people who are like, oh, OK, yeah. cool. Donald Trump's not president anymore. But Joe Biden, you wouldn't see people going around flying Joe Biden no. flags and wearing no. you know, Biden if, on their If side. Joe Biden was elected. Lukewarm at best. And then everybody would be checking and balancing the government, the yeah. president again, yes, like we should be. Yes, exactly. Instead of this, if Biden you know, is elected, a bunch of people, thing. a bunch of people are going to say, eh, "He's not my favorite, but at least he's better than the other guy." And it's in it's in Fox News's best interest to hope that Joe Biden gets elected. Uh, we'll see. Oh yeah, it's we'll much see. better to be the voice of dissent. All I'm telling you, trying to get a all I'm audience. saying is that Trump is probably going to get reelected. And I know there's a lot yeah. of people that don't like, you don't like hearing that, but I'm just saying. Yeah, to put it in a number, what percentage, like out of 100% chance, what percentage would you give him for being reelected? I got to be honest. I think, I like, I mean, I like. I think it's around 80. I like Biden, but, and, and I see the polls, and I know that common sense says, Oh, it's going to be Biden. But I'm telling well, this you. This isn't this isn't common I'm sense. We're talking about voters. We're talking, We're talking about reality. Yeah. We're not talking about who you want. Like We're I talking about of, what you think is going to happen. I see some people that go, "Oh, no matter what, I'm voting for Biden." But however, I'm telling you, those are also people like, "Well, I was going to vote, but uh, I got caught." Yeah, up. The, the next was, day, "Oh, was that yesterday?" I was binge watching <laughs> the I was binge watching the Kissing Booth series on Netflix or whatever. <laughs> And I missed it. Yeah, I, I was gonna vote. That, I'm just telling you, that's America. I didn't know that was gonna be on tonight. <laughs> Wait a minute, you had to vote yesterday? I had no idea. That's what'll be happening in November. So I'm telling you, probably. I gotta be honest. It, it's 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 I, I I I. Some people say, "Well, come on, it's gotta at least be 50-50. And I'm telling you. It's like it's like 60 40 now he's gonna get real something's gonna happen before November to kind of raise that percentage too yeah. there's the, there's something that's going to happen probably and, and that'll make him look better I would think I, or, or October I don't or whatever, I don't think that matters I don't think it matters he can he looks like shit now his supporters mm-hmm. love him uh, anyway so and there'll be all kinds of scare tactics to keep people out of voting. But I mean, this November voting thing, this is going to be like nothing we've seen before. I'm not voting. There's going to be some serious. I hope everybody's ready. Know where your kids are election night. Maybe keep them home. Not a parent, just some advice. Just keep them at home. Keep your kids home. No, uh, yeah, election night. I'm, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for that election because I would not be I wouldn't be surprised. I mean I hope I'm hopeful, but I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, let's see uh what else I have. Uh now that we're questioning whether the NBA or MLB say uh the MLB is uh going to continue on. Um let's see. You got to record some of these games somehow too cuz this stuff if we ever do get back to some sort of normality these crazy baseball games and what that's going to look so strange with the cardboard fans and the oh it is completely strange that's all we watched this oh, weekend I did it's audio. so bizarre the would, fake crowd sounds you, everything yeah. it's just weird would you buy one of those if if uh, like the Cubs or Cardinals I don't think either one of them are offering now but would you buy one of those cardboard cutouts of yourself and put it in the stands I no I don't think so no why I, I they're they look creepy. They're big, giant, like fat heads. It's not like a normal sized person sitting in a chair. It's just your face. It's just strange. I'm going to reveal something. I think if it goes on long enough, it'll go from, you know, you want to look normal. You want to look whatever. You're a fan. Hooray. It'll go to whoever can have the most creative huge head making wild ass faces. (laughs) And see, that's what I would be doing. yeah, yeah, exactly that'll go I'm on long it. enough, and then that's all you'll have. It's see, like, let's see who can get the I would most want, attention with their crazy face. I would put, um, you know, uh, 
not nonsense things up. Like I would make sure that uh, Raymond Burr dressed as uh, what was the character in the wheelchair, Ironside or whatever. Ironside, yeah. I would make sure uh -huh. like an Ironside is behind him. I would put like Oscar the Grouch, Yoda. And stuff like that. I would put people like well, that. Be they won't so be able to do those. Those are copyrighted. It'll be your face, and it'll be how. Oh, you're right. There'll be, there'll be rules. Rock can't have your. I would put Luke dick Skywalker. In a or something. I would put Luke Skywalker up. But you're right. A copyright. They're not going to show that no. shit. Oh. No, they'll do your face, and it'll be up to you to do the craziest face or something with your face, or yeah, you'll have a bunch of, you know, I would all love... through that sand. I, you, all right, I'm going to tell you. you I'm trying gonna, to get noticed. I'm going to let you in. I might get mad at somebody might get mad at me for this but i'll tell you this what someone <laughs> i love how doran goes what someone yeah. texts me what? he's gonna get really mad when i reveal this but what someone texted me this weekend and said uh, you guys can try to figure it out on your own but um wait a minute, sean did what <laughs> I couldn't hear the last part. Someone I know. Sean Jack did. Asked you again. Sean what? texted me. <laughs> Someone, a person texted me over the weekend. Oh. Mm -hmm. Now they have been known to dress. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, they have a, like their name is is like uh, uh, Bob. Okay. But mm -hmm. they sometimes dress like a woman. And uh, Bob's name is Babette. Right. So this person, okay. this person goes to me or texts me and says, "Which would be not me, by the way, because you could see Robert." Yeah. Oh, right sorry, oh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Know. No, but say this guy's name is Bob. All right. He's a big sports fan. He says, "Hey, do you think I should get a Babette? I want to buy a Babette cutout." He says, "I want to buy a Babette cutout." And put I it think that's exactly what people. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And that put is it behind home doing. plate in Oakland. Yes, because the Oakland A's are selling them. He says, and yes, I go, I do. I go, well, who who from Oakland <laughs> knows you? He goes, I go, who from Oakland is in on the joke? And he goes, he goes, I'll I'll be able to see it, and I'll go. So you want to buy a Babette? I don't want to reveal who this person is, so I'm trying to be, beat around the bush. <laughs> I think we're kind of figuring it out. Bush is sometimes found in sand. <laughs> like so, a sandy kind of area. This person, <laughs> so this person just wants to get a cutout of yeah. Babette. And buy just it. So and buy it from the Oakland A's. On TV. Just buy it from the Oakland A's. Absolutely. And then he wants just, to buy the baseball package just so he could watch the Oakland A games to see Babette behind home plate. Well, if that That's isn't the vainest fucking thing I've and ever I heard said, in my life, that's just absurd. He goes, but I'm afraid. That's got to happen. He goes, I'm afraid <laughs> that someone will uh, find out. And I said, listen, if anyone finds out, just blame me. He goes, what do you mean? I said, he does that anyway. I said, yeah. I said, I said, just right. say, say that, say that, that, that me and Rocky and Nick, I said, do it. I say, say that we did it as a joke that we pitched in and did it, and you didn't know anything about it. He goes, that's a good idea. Oh, I'd be behind that 100. percent I say, yeah. That's so, that's what people are gonna do. He should be the first. He'd be a pioneer. Just blame it on us. <clears throat> so I don't know where that's sitting, but my friend. Who has an alternate um, uh, version of himself? Appearance. Babette <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, is thinking of doing it. Now I'm not going to tell you who this is, but anyway, yeah. I think we have a pretty good idea. Like Rayanna. Yeah. <laughs> you, what do you guys think? I mean, it would be great, right? I know it's the Oakland A's. I think it's yeah. He'd be a pioneer. This is what everybody's going to be doing. He'd be first. <laughs> I know it's the Oakland A's, but hell, I'd watch an Oakland A's game just to see bad bats. I mean, they'll be looking back at him and saying, this all started with this guy right here at the yes. Oakland game in 2020. A bunch of cross-dressing. 
Well, just craziness. I mean, he'll be first. Because you yeah. see the things in the stand, it's just the people yes. in their normal phase. And yes. the big fan of the ever. But yeah. Oh my God, did anybody see that ugly ass baby that was right behind home plate? For which Yesterday, game? Yesterday, the Cardinals game. Oh, the Cardinals, yeah. No, because there are no ugly babies. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they're right. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that baby was a big, fat baby head right behind home plate. The, and I do the Cardinals uh, do the Cardinals it. have the fans in the stands like that? Are they doing that? Well, yeah, that's the game that my son was oh, watching yesterday. I, mean, I was in and out, but, yeah, I, I think so. Or maybe it was the game after that. See, because the Cubs, the Cubs aren't doing it. They should, but they're not. Uh, if they were, gotta I, get some fans first. <laughs> if there were, I would. Some fans would, that aren't embarrassed to have their face blown up and say I, I'm a Cubs fan. I'm serious. If there were, I would. I would have Rocky's husband make one of those T-shirts with the Ray Lytle's Morning Disaster logo, and I would put it. I would put it on someone and take a picture of like. Uh, I'd pick someone from the chat room. Hold on, let me check the chat room. I'd put. Uh, I'd pick like uh, Bubba. See, Bubba's in the chat room. Or uh, Brent or one of those guys, Bubba, I'd have like a 6X and put like a morning disaster shirt on him and have him sitting right behind home plate. You know what I mean? Promoting the morning disaster and and using, you know, someone else's face. I would do that in a heartbeat. But the Cubs aren't, they're not doing it. So not every team's doing it. Uh, but you got to find the team that, are, the teams that are doing it. And then you put those people. Um, you know, behind the home plate and get the publicity. Or, hmm. as my friend uh, was asking, we put Babette back there. <laughs> I think that'd be awesome. Let's see, I'm looking in the chat room. Somebody says, uh, Kathy says, Ray, do you remember when Jimmy Page from Verdon rang your bell? Uh, that is from Craig. Yeah, Jimmy Page was – he's a football player from Verdon. And, and here's what I remember is, um, yeah, he was a running back, and I was playing defense, and I don't know why I remember this. I was in high school, and uh, they ran a pitch or something, and I remember it was just me and him, and, and I remember this guy hit me. We hit helmet to helmet, and – all I remember was uh, being helped. I mean, being uh, I tackled him, but I don't know how. I think I was just so fat I kind of got in the way. But I was knocked out on the field, I think, from this guy just hitting me. So, yeah, uh, I see that question. I Yes, that is true. And I, I was th- blown away by the 20-minute-long uh, days and confused. By the way? Oh, oh! You're talking about Jimmy Page. That, that's why the guy was. That's that's why I remember the guy's name, because the guy's name and I. Right. The guy would be my age, but he was. I remember the name because it's the same of Zeppelin of uh, the guitarist. So that's why I remember the guy's name. But I remember tackling him, and we went helmet to helmet, and damn. Uh, the guy rang my bell. I think that's what I think. It's, yeah, like they. Uh, you're right. Uh, like a twenty-minute-long dazed and confused. Yes, and I, I actually heard literally dazed and confused. I heard one of the guitar solos when we went helmet to helmet. <laughs> By the way, I'm seeing that Pete. When we were talking back, when we were talking about um, uh, my my friendships and blah blah blah, Pete says that hell Ray won't even return a phone call. <laughs> uh, I know it was a while ago, but yeah, unfortunately, I'm just seeing it now, PD. I haven't been looking at the chat room. Uh, yeah, you're right. I wouldn't return a phone call. I, I can't trust myself to do any of that. By the way, Bubba's in the chat room saying he'd do it. He goes, he definitely would uh, let us put a picture of him up wearing a morning disaster t shirt. See, I would do that, right? I don't know what that I, would be. That would yeah, be you'd cool. have to make the advertising sneaky like that, like on a T-shirt yeah. or something. You couldn't just write it across their head. Yeah, you, I don't think they'd allow that. No, you have to put. I mean, you've worked with Major League Baseball. You know all those yeah. rules and can't do this, can't do that. And it's got to be a uh, a T-shirt that is unlicensed. Oh. You know what I mean? They don't want to pay any kind of uh, fee for anything. 
Yeah, but a lot of them yeah. they don't show like like the, it's just the head. So would you have to wear a hat? No. Yeah, you'd have to have one of those like neck tats. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> or like a turtleneck with it written on there. <laughs> We'll put a morning a disaster neck, neck tattoo on Bubba. Oh, right. and my call God. And just remember to keep looking up. Like, you're looking at a pop. You don't want to look like this, because then, you know, it's it's going to be like that. Let me call Jason Lee up. over at New Age. Let's see if we can put a tattoo on Bubba before we actually take the picture. That might be the way to sneak <laughs> it in. That would be great. That's great. Uh, yeah, so uh, I would do that in a heartbeat. But my friend wants to get his persona. Babette. Yeah. That's what he wants to do. He wants Babette uh, in Oakland. And he wants to put in Oakland. Why? I mean, I guess it's because Oakland's selling them. I mean, I, it, well, he's not going to put it. He's what? not going to put it in St. Louis. So everyone will see it. Everyone will figure it out. Everyone will figure it out. Who would, yeah, uh-huh. So uh, he wants to put it in he's Oakland. He's got a method to his madness. I think, I think it's Rocky. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's because he wants strangers to see it and actually conclude that Babette is real. <laughs> yes, yeah, right there in the hometown of MC Hammer. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and think that Babette's and think Babette's cute. It's at least totally that's what I think. For attention. Cool. Least, it's totally for attention. At least that's what I. But I'm not gonna say who this person is, but. Mm-hmm. I think we, yeah. yeah. I, once, I haven't figured it out. I, <laughs> I once asked Babette about that. I just remember, uh, you know, I said, I, I did ask, I go, oh, so what is it? You want men to, uh, he go, oh, go, 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 God, no. And I go. Well, I think he wants another broom handle or mop handle. Well, or I didn't know. That was. Yeah, I was, and I was asking, <laughs> and I was, I was seriously asking about that. And he goes, "Oh God, no." And I go, "Oh, so there's no uh, sexual thing with it?" He goes, "No." Really? He goes, "He goes, he goes." Uh, well, he goes. Technically, it would be lesbians. <laughs> he, goes, he goes, technically. Oh my God. Who does he think is going to be into this? Women are going to... Really? I don't know. He goes... He goes... uh, So Sandy is... Attracts women. She's a lesbian. Yes. Okay. And so I... And I said, I go, wait a minute. Plot point, he doesn't. I go, wait a minute. (laughs) You're saying... He's going to... He's really going to be pissed off. I see you're saying that Sandy doesn't like men. Uh, or or she, not, <laughs> I'm sorry, Babette's not uh, tr- attracted to men? Oh, no, 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 Babette's a lesbian. I go, so Babette only has sex with women. Yeah. Oh, so bad. That's a le- I don't think it matters who Babette is attracted to. It only matters who's attracted to Babette. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> That bet won't be the one calling the shots. It's a piece of cardboard. And I said, so what kind of sex does Babette have? Only lesbian. So I, <laughs> that's what I was told. So at least I believe that's, uh, at least I believe that's what's going on. So if, uh, if Babette ever hooks up with someone, I guess Babette can only have lesbian sex. Um, well, that'll be surprising. I'm just, which would mean, you know, I'm not sure what that would mean, actually. I've never had lesbian I sex. I don't know what that is. I, I don't know. I, I, that's going to be a lot of confusion. That was a conversation. <laughs> We're going to sit out on the porch, drink lattes, and talk about the moon. I'm just saying that that's a bad bet only has lesbian sex. Right. So I don't know. I should probably stop because bad bet will get incredibly mad at me for ever letting this go on. However, but bad bet is thinking about 
uh, wasting a ton of money to buy a blow-up head or whatever on uh, an Oakland A's fan. Well, I don't know who that bet is, really, but it sounds like somebody obviously has a lot of money that they could just throw around. It kind of sound like mean, that, doesn't it? No, this person doesn't have hmm. a lot of money. I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Like, this is the person that drives up in the fancy car and wants everybody to see that they've got the, the new sport model, and that's who I'm thinking. That's who I'm picturing. A lot of money, obviously, because they're going to fly to L.A. and probably <laughs> no. got some connections in no. Los Angeles. So no, they just want to... Uh... <laughs> nope. It's going to buy a, a behind home plate. Um, oh, oh, yeah, going to buy the thing right behind home plate. For the Oakland A's. Yeah, that's good. That's somebody right there. That's connections. Uh, it's got to be some kind of star. Rocky, <laughs> uh, Doran, what is the greatest boy band song of all time? I want to hold your hand. It is not. The um, um, I want it that way. Um. That's number four. That's not bad. Is it? Okay. Number four. I want it that way. Uh, they, the writers of, of... Saturday Night by the Bay City Rollers. Uh, are the Bay City Rollers on the list? Um, um, no, because the Bay City Rollers and the Beatles were both bands. And apparently in order to be a boy band, you can't be a band. Well, it, you've got to be singer, I a row of singers just, dancing, a row of sing. Yeah, I think. And that's a that's a band. No, but, but like if I you got, were an actual band like the Bay City Rollers, you're not a boy band. No, but I'll tell you, I'm looking at this list. There are some. <clears throat> that have the one song. <laughs> like, who are, the hell is this? There are some. O-Town is. Some O-Town bands on there. here. Some bands on here are actual bands that play music and, and and all kinds of stuff, you know. But yeah, like you mentioned, I uh, the Beatles. I don't think the the Beatles are just a, a a boy band. But if you if you look at what boy bands are, with driving girls crazy, blah blah, that's sort of how the Beatles started, right? That is. Yeah, Paul, Paul McCartney was girls the one that said that they were the first boy band. Yeah, I think he's right because. Back during the She Loves You, Yay, and uh, I Want to Hold okay. Your Hand. Those on. women would scream until they passed out. Yeah, they were. I think they were a boy band. Would the Chipmunks happen to be a boy band? No. They're a chipmunk band. Why not? <laughs> yeah, because they're not boys. <laughs> <laughs> the Bay City Rollers. Chipmunks? By the way, on. Sam, if you, if you can't be a, if you can be a boy band and not be a band, can it, you at least have to be a boy? You've got to be human. <laughs> you have One to be of those two words has to be real. <laughs> Is it the Jackson Five? By the way, by the way, Nick, the Bay City Rollers did make Rolling Stones lists. No way. I don't know what I'm talking they're, about. They're number twenty. Oh, yeah, they were used in the. They were the Teen Idols of the seventies. Twenty nine, Saturday night. S A T U R D A Y night. Uh, the Bay City Rollers. Jackson Roller. Five, ABC. It is not Jackson Five, ABC. Uh, let me see if it's on the list. Um, I believe. Are you talking about songs or number twenty-two? Or number twenty-two uh, songs. songs. Number twenty-two is ABC. Oh well, there's probably the half Jackson the Bob. same. It's probably half Backstreet Boys. Or In Sync or something like yeah, that. Yeah, In Sync. In Sync. Bye bye bye. Yeah, number I, two. I was on the station number that two. used to have boy band that they would have a boy band cover group. And we had them in concert like seven times, and they oh did all God. the there all the su- boy band songs. There's such a thing as a boy band cover group. Yes. Yeah. Wow. They're from Chicago. Wow. They're called Boy Band Night. Wow. And instead they of seeing in sync or the Backstreet, the instead of seeing in sync or the Backstreet Boys, you know, and just hearing their songs, you get to hear all the boy band songs. But how and then in this no cover band and stuff like that? In this cover band, Rocky. Are they boys or are they all like 30 some odd year old guys? They look like they're maybe they 30. Dad bods. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, some of them. <laughs> they all got dad bods. 
There's a lot <laughs> but of heavy they're heavy all dressed in white and they all do the, right. the same dances or whatever. So it drives the ladies crazy. That's all that matters. And guys, by the way, guys looking for women, if you see one of these boy band night concerts coming, that's where you want to be when that lets out. That's right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Trust. I want to put together a boy band. Me and a bunch of other fat guys that can sing. Oh, of course, we're all too fat to like dance. Like Joey Fatone? <laughs> yeah. We're all too fat Just to a dance. Row of Joey Fatones. <laughs> because we're too fat to dance, we all just sit in chairs. Oh, my God. Uh, no, Nobody's gotten number one yet, by the way. Bye 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 was number two. I Want It That Way was number four. Number four. So the number one boy band song, I thought we were talking about groups. Yeah. Song was probably... Um, yeah, song. Oh, wow. Um, bye, bye, bye. That was number two. That was two. Um, and we did. Backstreet's everybody, Backstreet's back? Uh, no. Uh, that's number 12. Was it a One Direction song? Is it that new or is it older? Give it us is a hint. One Direction. One Direction is on the list, but they are not number one. Good morning. You're on the morning Hang, disaster. Hanging tough. Good morning, Ray. Good morning. Who is this? Sarah Jane. Oh, hi, Sarah Jane. Sarah How Jane, are you? Sarah Jane, we're trying to figure out the top boy band song of all time. Oh, gosh. There's so many good ones. <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, boy. Oh, I, top I, line I grew of the up whole show. in the 90s, okay? <laughs> Goodness sake. Were you a boy band fan? I loved boy bands. I loved, um, I liked Backstreet Boys, NSYNC. Um, then I had, I liked some punk rock bands, but. Uh, no. I'm not sure what guess you gave, but the answer is no. That's not the <laughs> hang, hang in tough. Hanging Tough is is uh, on the list, but it's not Hanging Tough. Is it anything by Menudo? No, Menudo. I don't think Menudo's on the list. Oh, that's a shame. At least they're not in the top 25. New Edition, Candy Girl. New Edition. That's number three, Nick. Ooh. You guys. Oh, my God. You've guessed two, three, and four. You've guessed. That is amazing. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, that's not bad. And you guessed uh, number 22 was ABC. What's the, what's the quit, quit playing games with my heart? Quit playing <laughs> games with my heart. Uh, everybody, Boy yep. Street, Backstreet's Back is number 20. Hanson. Oh, no. okay. I said that one. Hanson? Hanson is number nine with Mbop. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, I'm going to give you the list. All right, here we go. I'll, I'll start. Okay, let's do it. I'm going to go with 25 down. Number 25 is okay. Sucker by the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> number, the hell is that? Number 24, I love this song. 1982, musical use, Pass the Duchy. Because <laughs> it, oh, it was about passing a joint, right? Uh, they're not a... They're not a... They no, were, I guess they are. They're a know. Jamaican boy band, yeah. It wasn't it Pass the Duchy from the left-hand side? Wasn't it? And Rocky, wasn't that about yes. pot, right? It's well, it was about, um, yeah, sort of. This it was, it was, it was literally a pot, a, a cooking pot. Yeah, there was supposed to be food. It's supposed to be about food. Oh, I thought it was about them. I thought it was about smoking pot. Say Jamaican. Well, it is, but because <laughs> for them, it was about food. Because they're Jamaican and I'm racist, I assumed it was about marijuana. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that. A little bit of column A, a little bit. Of column. Number 23. Oh, my gosh. Number 23 is from 1956. The boy band wow. was Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. You know, why do fools fall in love? Why do fools fall in love? Yeah. <gasps> wow. Number 22 was the Jackson yeah, There was a whole five. movie made about that. The Jackson 5 ABC. Number 21 was the Monkees and Daydream Believer. Aww. Number 20, Everybody by the Backstreet Boys. <clears throat> Number 19. How can ABC be on there, but I Want You Back is not? 
I want you people don't know the title. I want you back. Anyway. And uh, (laughs) and who said that's that's not on the list? I don't know. I said it earlier. Oh, 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 I didn't hear you say it. It's number one. I I didn't even hear you say it, Rocky. I'm sorry. Uh, That's number one. It's number one. Yeah. Is what? Is I want you back. Do 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 do. I want you back. It's number one, the Jackson Vine. Oh, baby, give me one more chance. Oh, baby, show you that give me one more one. chance. <laughs> show you that I love you. One more chance. I want you back. A BTS. I don't know who BTS is. They're number 19 with Spring Day. Somebody did say One Direction earlier. Number 18 was Story of My Life. By the way, okay. I like I like One Direction. My daughter... Uh, my daughter, who's 18 now, uh, she was into One Direction a few years ago, and so she would play the music. I really liked them. I thought it, I thought they were good. Are they still around? I know Harry Styles is still I around. They broke up or they, they split or on up. They kind of... I like Harry Styles. I like the uh, I like his albums. Um, uh, it's gonna be me. In sync is 17. Motown Philly by Boys the Men is 16. Oh, yeah. There's a band called Take That. I have no idea who they are. Does anybody know Take That? Is that Back were, for Good? Uh, yeah, Back for Good is number 15. I want you back. I want you back. I only want you back for good. Light Rock 99 with the door open. <laughs> that had, um, what's his face? Um, I have no idea who the band I've never heard of them. They're from the UK. Yeah, weren't they the band that Simon Cowell started, or is that somebody else? Is that the band that Ricky Gervais was in? <laughs> I know Ricky Gervais was in a boy band. That's that's true. I, I didn't know that. Uh, let's see. Number 14 is a song called Sherlock from the Korean group Shinny. I have no idea who that is. I don't know what that is. Number 13, stuff. I thought this song would have been higher. The Jackson 5. With I'll Be There. I thought that would have been a lot higher. Number 12, SOS by the Jonas Brothers. Number 11, some band called High Five with I Like the Way the Kissing Game. Oh, I like that song. Number 10. Now, that was like a new Jack type boys to men sound, I think. Yeah. LFO in 1999 there's a band called LFO that did the song Summer Girls. Oh, barf. Hanson with That was the one that uh, it keeps talking about Amber Crombie and Fitch. Yes. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Hanson Mbop is number 9. Mbop. That's I do know a little bit of that song. New Kids on the Block. Had a bunch of hits. You got it. The right stuff from 1988. Well, according to this thing, they only had one, apparently, unless they've got another one coming up. (laughs) Where's Hanging Tough? Yeah, Hanging Tough must be farther down because they're, that's the only, this is the only time. By the way, how do you have a list of greatest uh Boy band Greatest stuff. boy band New songs kids on New the Kids block on the Block is on one time. Is on one song. Yeah, that's got shocking. Shiny or whatever that was from Korea. And who the hell, B, who's BTS? Have we figured that out yet? I have yet? no idea who yeah, BTS come on. is. You, uh, Obsession by Adventura is number seven. I have no idea who that is. No, I don't know what that is. Number six, What Makes You Beautiful by One Direction, 2011. Uh, number five is a song Moon by the Korean sensation BTS. Sensation. That's why we don't oh, know. Oh, okay. But they're the number I five know who song. They are. And they all have their hair bleached out. They're a bunch of blonde Korean kids. Well, aren't we all? <laughs> I would I would hope I would hope they're South Korean. Uh what makes you beautiful? Uh, is number six, number five, Moon by BTS. Number four. <laughs> I want it that way by the Backstreet Boys. Number three, Candy Girl by Nick's favorite band, New Edition. Number two, wow. Bye Bye Bye. That's number three? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I barely remember that. They had like that's Cool the, It Now was bigger than that. That's the I, I remember that Cool It plays Now when my wife calls. How does Candy? Oh, well, I'm, I'm not sure how Candy Girl goes. I don't remember. I remember Cool It Now. Remember that? Candy cool Girl. Cool It Now. Watch out! Do, do, do. <laughs> And they had the one about the telephone that was broken or that my telephone might be broken. Isn't that the one, is that, the one that something? Bobby Brown was in? Bobby Brown. Yeah. Bobby Brown. And like half of Belle Biv DeVoe and... Oh, that's right. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, that's yeah. what they broke off into. Uh, uh, slap it, bitch. Bobby Brown. Uh, <laughs> number two, Bye 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 In Sync. That's number three. And number one, I Want You Back by the Jackson Vibe. Who, who didn't know we'd have so much fun with a list of the top boy band songs? Oh, ever. my God. Thank you to Rolling Stone. Well, when they Stone. throw in ones like from when I was a child, then I can know what they talk. Yeah, like Jackson 5 and and uh, Bay City Rollers or whatever. If uh, if you want to see the whole list, go to rollingstone.com. They have the top 75. Not everybody at once, though. We don't want to crash the site. <laughs> <laughs> Right? Uh, oh, God. There you go. Wow. Uh, let's see. This is something. Uh, they've canceled. How are the monkeys on there, but the Beatles aren't? Anyway. Yeah. No, the monkeys are on more than once, too. And the 70. Right. Just, yeah, I don't approve of the list. By the way, I like the monkeys. I never thought of them. Oh, before. me, too. I Love think the them. monkeys are. They were their greatest hits was the first cassette tape I ever owned. Yeah. Well, you've got the best studio musicians all together playing for the first three albums, so I mean, it's the. Why wouldn't it? I think there? I think Mickey Dolan's voice is underrated. I think that guy's voice is, you know. Yeah. I heard I heard monkey songs before I heard Beatles songs. I think the monkeys are yeah. extremely. Just because of the TV show. Yeah, Sarah Jane says, as in the chat room, saying, maybe I should call back another time. I forgot she's on the phone. <laughs> hey, Sarah Jane. Yeah, hi. <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot you were on until I saw you mention the chat room. You were calling because um, I told you to call back the other day. You had, yeah. You had said that you were dating. A little bit of background on Sarah Jane. She's called for years. She has called my shows. Sarah Jane is a, a really sweet girl. Who uh, would you? I would say she's a sex addict. At, at one point, you were a sex addict, right? Yeah, I actually go to twelve step for it. Yeah, she went to twelve step for sex addiction. I still do. Uh, but you had cleaned up and you became really Christian. Christian there for a few years, but now you're you've fallen back into the ways of the devil. <laughs> and you have fallen, yeah. you've fallen right back into your sex addiction. But when we talked last week. You had told me that you were dating uh, someone who was transgendered. They were tra- they were uh, going from man to woman, and I don't want to offend anybody. Cause I, I don't I don't understand everything, but they're going from man to woman. Mm-hmm. And uh, you had said that you were dating them. So, but you. You had sex with them, and you said that he, that she gave you a good pounding. So the penis was and, the penis was still in use. Yeah, yeah. Even though she hasn't she hasn't started her hormone treatment yet. But so does she have breast? Not yet. So, so you, it wasn't lesbian sex. It was, am I? No, not quite. No. She identifies as a woman she, already. Yeah, so then. I mean, I guess if she identifies. Right. Is it, is she endowed? Is she well endowed? Very much. See, now there's a. We've established this, remember? Well, I just, I gotta be, I can't, I cannot even begin to tell you how upset I am that this woman has a bigger crank than me. I, right, that's what we were talking about last time. <laughs> well, I just can't get over it. <laughs> Obviously, it's too bad it couldn't be traded. And yes. then, <laughs> is it girthy? 
trade it with somebody with a smaller one. Yeah, because I'll, I'll. Oh my god. I'll I'll I'll, I'll trade him. Yeah, she. Um, her and I aren't actually dating. Oh, she. She's she's falling in love with me because oh. I'm that kind of person that people fall in love with. <laughs> Okay, I'm pulling I, I, myself I see there. Doran, but, Doran is about to leave us. <laughs> I just got the I just got the message from Doran saying she's leaving, so I wish she'd be around for this conversation. But all right, so <laughs> uh, because she could tell me when to stop whenever I, you know, if I start asking the wrong questions. So uh, that's cool. So you are dating this woman. Right. I am not dating her. Oh, we are friends. Is she and date- we have fun? You're having sex with this woman. Who, yeah. Who has a bigger penis? Where would you rank it as compared to penises you've seen? Um. Would you say you've seen a lot of penises? I have actually. Where would you rank this woman's penis? I'd say she's probably about. An eight? No, but I'm saying like in your in the penises you've seen, that's what percentile? Is that in the top ten percentile? The top five, you know. Oh, you mean like how great it is? Well yeah, like, you know, well, how big it is. Oh yeah, I'd say like um the top like I don't know, eight percent. It's one of the bigger ones you've seen. Yeah. It's from a female. It's from a woman. Mm-hmm. See, there's just no way. There's just no way that it isn't. This isn't weird. Rocky, I, Rocky, Nick, I, agree with me. Is this is this whole thing weird or not? Or am no. I am I wrong? It seems it's it's weird, right? I like how neither one of them are saying anything. Oh, I said no. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh. So, Ray, here's the thing head. is I'm a very open person, non-judgmental. Right. I love people for who they are. Yes. It's not about the body parts, it's Absolutely. about who the person is. And are you the s- thing is are you, it just so happens, you yeah. know. Are you are you but you say you say you're not dating? No, she really likes me, mm-hmm. and I kind of, I kind of am starting to get feelings for her and stuff. Oh, but I'm, I'm not ready for a relationship right now because I'm kind of like, I'm doing stuff with other people at the you same time. You sound like you're full blown into sex addiction again. Yeah, yeah, I have a dong and everything like that too. So I, I'm, I'm sorry, you have a what? Um, I have a a daddy dom. Should I ask what a daddy dom? <laughs> it's not what you think oh, a it dom. is. I thought she said dong. I'm like, well, who the hell doesn't have a dong? <laughs> I have okay. one. I have one connected to me, but I have, I don't know <laughs> what is it? a daddy dom is. So it's, I, I shouldn't it's ask, basically- but what is a daddy dom? It's basically a type of dominant in um, BDSM. Oh, oh, the S&M, the S&M thing that you're into. Okay. All right. So um, basically it's more of a loving, affectionate type. Um, like I role play, I'm a baby girl. Okay. So. Wait, wait. You're saying it's a, the guy's a dom, so he's a dominant? Yes. But yet you're saying that's a loving relationship yeah because um you know the thing is like outsiders you think of it as oh it's all like hardcore like hitting slapping kicking punching whatever you know choking all that stuff which yeah that's a good part of it but um the thing is uh, there's also that trust bond that you is built and connected so and you help the odd. other person become a better person. And, you know, I have like 
the best you have thing a, going you, on. You have a serious sex addiction. You, you, I don't think that's that rare, though. I think a lot of people are into that, though. You have totally fallen off the wagon. <clears throat> and that's gone on for years. What? Yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm starting to live out some of my fantasies. Oh, that's for, the thing. What, what kind of fantasies do you have? <laughs> um, I, I, I like, I like it rough. I, I'm, I, I asked that. Like, I didn't really want to know. I I, I just asked. You know. I, I like, I really like giving either. another yeah. person. Good. I just like to give someone else control I, I and don't... let them have their way with me. You're so, you are so off the wagon right now. It's unbelievable. You I have... would want to take that all the way, though, and be like, all right, well, that's over now. I want you to crawl across the floor and you know dishes. <laughs> so, like, does the guy give that floor? <laughs> so, if the guy does, it, can a guy call you and just say, um, and give you orders? Um, I mean, I still have the freedom to live my life. Like, I choose to do what I want to do. Um, it's it's more so like when I get my own place, there'll be a lot more freedom. Like, I'm definitely you have that red room, giving... red room coming. <laughs> yeah, what I'm, 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 def I'm well, definitely giving see? the key to my dom. What I'm so saying he can is, come and go as he pleases. Like if you're if the dom if and you're getting you're dating other people while you have this dom. Yeah, it's it's That's it's very, totally normal. Very odd. So if the guy calls you, and the person that she's dating is probably not doing any of that, right? No, but she's she's okay with it. Like we make no, videos no, no, and we have totally, fun, it's a, and it's a totally she knows separate about thing. My dom. It doesn't go with like the girlfriend boyfriend. The dominant person's a totally separate thing. Is that accurate? Yeah, yeah I'm still single. Okay, so what if your if your dom calls you and says, "I want you to touch yourself right now." Like Sarah Jane, and I don't know how the Dom talks, but uh, <laughs> Sarah Jane, you start touching yourself right now. So you would have to do don't it. Don't make me get out the phone app. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get out the phone app. Yeah. Insert the bullet now. I'm going to hit the phone app. Uh, is, wow. I mean, is that how it works? I don't, I don't know. No. No, it doesn't work like that. So it, 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 it depends on whether you want to do it or not. Yeah, yeah. But he See, could, I but am... you would have to want to do it. Yeah, here's the thing. With me being the sub, I technically have full control. Because all I have to do is say the safe word and everything stops. What is the safe word? So, my safe word yeah. is peach. Peach. Okay, I want to know it. Just, just in case I'm ever talking to you, and maybe the Dom's on the other line or something, I want to be able to say the safe word and get you out of it. But you have to kind of, you've kind of set aside a time for all this, though, to where this is what we're doing now. This doesn't pop up, right? I mean, it doesn't. You put it on your calendar. Pop, I mean, you set aside. This is what we're doing, and this is. It's not just yeah. random calling up and marking orders, like Ray was saying. Yeah, he doesn't like order me around. Like, plus I'm a brat, so I totally am stubborn with the rules, and I like to get punished. So, okay, but like, can uh, can the guy? Huh? Can the guy? Uh, it's kind of like role playing almost. Yeah. So, like, yeah. in the calendar will say Thursday at five o'clock. There's an hour of. S and M time. Is that how it works? Yeah, we usually we set up times to meet each other and stuff. We talk over the phone. We um. I, I just we text. How much older than you is this You're guy? Almost got it. It works like that, except for no one has calendars like that anymore. <laughs> you know, he has a calendar I'm, on the wall right. Tell me on your phone. <laughs> on your phone calendar. I'm actually oh, okay. older than him. You're older than the guy who's the dom? Yeah. 
How does someone get into that when they're that young? He's not that young. Well, you're in your 30s, right? Yeah. You guys are pretty young. You're still young, at least compared to me. Hey, it's one of those things is you don't necessarily choose it. It chooses you. Oh, for goodness. Why stop? That sounds, like, you that, know? Sounds, and that sounds like the kind of bullshit of anyone who's doing I enjoy. stuff that they know they shouldn't that's, that's be doing. They, yeah, that, that's what they say. That's what people who, should, who know they're doing something they shouldn't do say. It's not something that I choose. It's something that chooses me. That's what I say about Hostess. I know, I know I shouldn't be eating Hostess. But that's the Little shit. Little Debbie asked me out on the date. I couldn't say no. <laughs> that's the shit. That's the shit I say. When my wife walks in and goes, what are you doing with a box of Twinkies? Oh, I didn't choose these Twinkies. <laughs> they, chose, they chose me. I didn't choose to be fat. They chose me. You know, the cool thing, though, about this lifestyle is uh, it really helps me heal from past traumas. You're so odd. You are so odd. No, I'm serious, though. Like, I, I mean, he really. Say that. A lot of people. How many people do you know that are like in Sarah Jane's situation? That are in these well, dumb well, sub Well, actually, a couple. But um, no, I mean, I've just watched some documentaries over the. I mean, this stuff's been going on since the '60s. Just uh, documentaries over the years and things like that. Into such weird stuff. There is a lot of people that are like into it because I run into them all the time. <laughs> It's I, just, it's a, a lot of people who are into it keep it secret and, you know, they don't openly talk about it unless, you know, they meet someone else who's in it. Kathy's, Kathy says, I think Sarah Jane needs to be introduced to HBJ. No, she knows HBJ. You know Hillbilly Joe, don't you? Of course. I used yeah. to hang out with him all the time. Yeah. You ever, you ever have sex with him? Did I? Yeah. At one point, yeah. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. At one, at one point, you had sex with Hillbilly <laughs> Joe? Did you ever have to write an apology letter? <laughs> oh, my God. Did you, did you hook up with Joe and his wife? Um, or just him and, him and Kitty back in the day. Yeah. Oh, you did hook up with both of them. Yeah, like right. back in the day. Joe claims... Every time he's on, he tells Doran if he banged her, how he would rock her world and all this stuff. Was Joe a mind, uh, uh, was he a, a world rocker at sex? When you had sex with him? Um. I mean, I would say I'm not. I'm not asking you to kiss and tell, but I'd be lying. I'm the answer, probably not. I am. I am 100% <laughs> kissing, asking you to kiss and tell. I was more so into Kitty at the time. Right. So you're saying that Joe's ex-wife uh, nailed you better than Joe did? No, I. I'm, I'm saying she. I don't pleased, know. She pleased I, you more than Joe did. I mean. His penis was, was so, so long ago. His penis was so immemorable. You don't even remember it. No, I do. I just <laughs> don't want to comment on it. I just I just want to say that I I would I would never hook up with you in a I consider you a, a sweet person. I would never hook up with you in a million years. However, if I were to uh I I would imagine you would at least remember it more than you seem to be remembering Hillbilly Joe right now. <laughs> oh, I remember a lot of people, and I I remember Hillbilly Joe and stuff. Like I said, I'm just being respectful right now, and I'm just not going to comment on it. I, I would say this. Every time he comes on the show, he wise-asses Nikki and Doran and talks about how he would – Sexually, he would rock their worlds. Well, all I'm saying is, you have been with him. Would he rock their world? A simple yes or no. Like, I'm seeing... Yeah, I think we got the answer. 
<laughs> yeah, and it sounds to me like you're saying yes, no. You'd be like, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. But, you know, yeah. if it's no, then it's well, like, okay, yeah, 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 he would totally rock their world. All right, you're lying. <laughs> I have absolutely no confidence in what she's speaking. Is you told us that you enjoyed being with his wife more than him? Yeah, because I was more into women at the time. Mm -hmm. I'm looking in our chat room. Uh, Bubba is in the chat room. Uh huh. If, if I were, and I think Bubba's uh, with someone or whatever, but uh, if he wasn't, and. Uh, I said, go on a date with Bubba. You, would you go? I don't know what Bubba looks like, but maybe. I think you're back. You're fall. You're face full. You're face first into your addiction again. You have fallen off the wagon. You're face first. You are addicted to sex again. Well, that's fine. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm totally like there. Yeah. It's there. It's crazy. You are. You can't stop talking about it. Kind of become the center of my world right now. Besides working, and that's. I thought that. Well, there's really not a lot else going on. So I mean, <laughs> it's not the, like you can go to the concert. Did or go the to pandemic the... drive you back into sexual addiction? <laughs> it, I think it did. Because so you... you know what? Honestly, what? I was. I was doing okay, yeah. and then I got lonely. You were all religious. Yeah, and then, and then one day at work, he walked in those doors, and it was like an instant connection. Who was when, he? Huh? Who was he? The Dom? Yeah, before he became a Dom. It's like, I had no idea he was a Dom. Until, like, I started talking to him for, like, 10 minutes or so. Then I picked up on it. And I'm like, oh, this piece adds up to this piece. You know. But it's just, like, he loves me so much and cares about me as a person and is helping me become a better person. Yeah. Uh, it's just my wild side's kind of coming out right now. But he never has me do anything I don't want to do. All I have to do is tell him, hey, I'm not comfortable with this. And he's totally okay with it because he wants to do everything to protect me, everything to keep me from getting hurt. He wants me to be happy. You know, he wants me to feel good. And he makes me feel good. I feel really loved. He blows my phone up all day long, um, usually. And I blow his phone up all day long, you so, know. And I just. So you're saying that you cannot get into. Um, you cannot get into a relationship with this trans woman because you are in love with your dominate domin. I don't even know. Is it dominate? Well, well, is dom. It? Daddy Dom. A perfect, your daddy Dom. A perfect question to leave it on, and we'll discuss next time as it's ten o'clock. <laughs> oh, we should probably wrap it up. Yeah, Sarah Jane. You're in love with that. I can tell you right now. You are in love with this Dom. I am, and yes. he knows it. Well, but the hard part is well, the hardest part, and that I'll leave you with this. Is the penis of that woman is what it sounds like to me. That's the hardest part. <laughs> no. no. It, it sounds it's, he, you're in love with he's this. He's not guy. free. He's not free to date me and Why? be with me. Why? Is he married? No. So he's not married. Is he in jail? No. Oh. All right. Is he, is, he, is he in the clergy? <laughs> oh, my God. Is he in the clergy? What's he do for no. a living? What's he do for a living? He's not religious. Um, I, I'd rather not say for his privacy. I'm just asking. He has a weird job or not? That's all. All right. Do you get a discount at the Casey's that he works at? Huh? Do you get a discount at the Casey's that he works at? <laughs> what are you talking about? I, I'm just wondering. <laughs> Trying to figure out what he does for a living. All right. Well, uh, call us back. You're in love with that Dom guy. This should be a Friday show. 
Why yeah. would wait w- one question? Yeah. <clears throat> Why would you think he worked at a gas station? I don't know. I just, I just, I was. Oh, just, because I, I worked think he at was a gas starting there and was going to work yeah, his way through just... every occupation <laughs> until he got. <died. laughs> okay, I was like confused. I'm like, wow. I'm like, that's crazy. Is he going to get his mail route changed to your address? Oh, well, is he going to bake a cake for uh, a special occasion for you? Well, uh, it, does he fix your car when it's broken? I'm saying that Pat, said, Pat says, I love how of all the things that Sarah Jane has discussed on the air at this point, the one thing that she gets super offended about is the fact that the guy might be in jail. Yeah, that offended you? Come on. Of all the stuff I've said? Yeah. Uh, well, I actually had a weekend guy like four years ago that was, he'd get out of prison on the weekends and be on house arrest. Gotcha. And I used to go hook up with him every weekend. When he was on house arrest. Yeah. You're never going to get married if you uh, keep, you know, hooking up with these guys with your yeah. sex addiction. Right now, I don't want to. Right. I just got out of a sucky relationship and right. I'm having fun right now. You're full blown into sex addiction again. All right. And, and you're in love with your dom. Thank you, Sarah Jane. It's always good to talk to you. Okay. All you. right. Bye guys. See you later. She is, uh, she is so bizarre. Very bizarre. Uh, we should wrap it up today, On guys. On an upcoming show, I'll have to tell you sometime about the uh, guys that used to come in the gay bars with the uh, dog mask stuff on. That was a new thing that started up they, the, before the pandemic. The guys would wear dog mask? <laughs> what is that? Yeah, that's a whole. That's for tomorrow. <laughs> Nick, remind me to ask about the guys wearing dog masks at the gay bar. All right. Do you regularly? Do you regularly? You don't regularly go to gay bars. Do you? Uh, we were going about two or three times a week for a while. So you and your and husband, then, then, you guys would both go to gay bars together? Oh, yeah. I don't know what's going on there. And there's different types of bars. I mean. All right. But you specifically said gay bars. I mean. There's different types of gay bars. Oh, okay. There's bars you go to when, you know, by yourself. Where you go to hook up <laughs> with someone. Right. And, and then, then there's the hookup bars you go to with your husband. <laughs> Where, do you both hook up with someone, or you just go to drink and have fun? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes. See, I don't know what's going on with, you know. I don't know what's going on in anybody's relationship. I know if I went to my wife and I said, hey, do you want to go to a bar? She'd be like, no. She'd be like, you can go to a bar. Whatever it's going to take to get you out of this house, go. But she, my wife would be like, I'm not going to a bar. So I think it's good that you guys actually still, you know, go out together as long as you can. Because at some point in your relationship, the thought of going out would be... There'll be a pandemic, and then you won't be able to do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> just, Got that. I'm just saying, my wife and I <laughs> and are And then you'll fine. be fired and won't have any money to go out. So then after the pandemic's over... But my, my wife and I are fine. Like, during this pandemic, the fact that we can't go out, it's fine for us. Because we never like to go out anyway. That's how I am about sports, but I really miss the going out, uh, you know, the nightlife stuff. But I, I don't care about the sports at all. Or so you're the, saying you would go to a sports I don't have bar, kids, so the school doesn't, you know, doesn't affect me. And you would go to a sports bar, but you didn't necessarily go to watch sports. No, I don't. I don't sports bars. If you're not interested in the sports, then it, you know, every 15 minutes it's yeah! <laughs> out of nowhere. You're like. <laughs> You know, it's just drinking with random people yelling for no apparent reason. Right. Or, oh! I know, I know my... motherfucker! And then throw something in. I know my wife and I never, I mean, we never went out to eat. We didn't go anywhere. So this pandemic, we were sort of, you know, made for it. What if we were... Nick, do you and your wife go out to eat still? You guys do all that stuff? No. Yeah. Nope. So you, you're in the same, you know what I mean? You're... If you never, if you didn't go anywhere, the pandemic's really not that bad. Except losing your job sucks, but. Well, I mean, we would go out to eat every other Friday and Saturday just as a date night, but yeah, not anymore. Not since everything opened back up. I, the, the thought of going out to eat uh, is uh, so 
unattractive to me right now. We would have we would have to be like the only ones at that place. Well, in Springfield, we had how many restaurants and yeah. bars have been closed down? Rocky, are you keeping up on what's going on in Springfield? How many restaurants and bars have been closed down <laughs> in the last week because of COVID? Some of the well, most the same everywhere, pretty much. Yeah, but... <laughs> some of the most some of the most popular bars in Springfield are closed right now. You can't even get in. A lot of people are doing the DoorDash thing, and I just wonder, like, people in our situation, like, we had never done that before with DoorDash, and now we're doing it, like, twice, you know, like, yeah. both Saturday and Sunday, twice on, you know, weekend, and uh, it's great. You have the, you know, 54th Street Grill or, you know, these big red Holtons or whatever delivered right to your door. I wonder how many people are like us never did that before, but now that... Oh, we've yeah. tried the DoorDash stuff. We're not going back to going out all. You the, know what I love is I love curbside pickup. Yeah, or I that. I freaking Same love thing. it. I love curbside. At some point, it's all going to go back to normal. Right. And, and restaurants, and there's going to be some restaurants that aren't going to order any, that aren't going to offer anymore. And I want to be like, that's it. I'm never going there again. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I think this has changed a lot of people's lifestyles. You know, where. I, going I, out to a restaurant, you know, and you yeah. can just have it delivered to your door. And we never, we never went out to restaurants before the pandemic. But the pandemic started, and we said, "Hey, let's order. Uh, like, we're gonna get, let's get some fried chicken." Oh, here's this one restaurant my friend told me about. They're doing curbside, so we order fried chicken from there, and you go and you pick it up, and you say, "Oh, this place is great." But yet, we've never been inside. I couldn't tell you anything about this place. Right. And at some point, they're going to be like, no, we don't do curbside anymore. And they will lose me as a customer. Because there'll be no need for me to go. Because I, I just like going and getting curbside delivery and, or the curbside uh, pickup and coming home. There's got to be a lot of restaurants that, have, even when it's over, that are going to be thinking, we're going to keep the curbside going. Yeah, I hope so. That'd be smart. Because the curbside, <clears throat> I think a lot of people will keep ordering that. Yes. Because... You, you like going – I was very sad when uh, Head West stopped the curbside pickup. I liked it. And I think it, it'll it be like when – if this does get back to normal, which that's very optimistic, by the way, um, if people start going out to restaurants again, I think people will go to restaurants if they have like date night or something, go to ones farther away because they can always do the DoorDash uh, later on for the closer ones. Yeah. So you won't be going to your neighborhood restaurant anymore. You'll be going to – you know, uh, wherever, Decatur, Kincaid. <laughs> There's never any good Let's reason. Let's go get, you need reservations for Kincaid. There's never a reason do. for anyone to go to Kincaid. Got a call first. Yeah, Bubba says curbside at the dispensary is great. Yes. Curbside at the pot shop? Are you kidding? At some point when they get the vaccine done or whatever, at some point, they're going to make you have to go in. That's going to suck. That's the only place I've been going. How bizarre is that? Because I don't have to, you know, I just. You 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 do curbside pickup at the pot dispensary. There's, we have two here, and they're different companies. Um, the one in Sauge is the same company as the one in Springfield. And then we have the one in Collinsville. And they're set up two completely different ways. The one in Collinsville, you get dropped off at a fun park that's now closed where kids used to go on trampolines and. <laughs> You can drive. You, you drive up in there, and you wait for a shuttle that takes you from that parking lot to the dispensary, where you then stand in a line and go into this dispensary, like one, you know, like six feet apart or whatever. Oh, so you go. You get to go inside. Yeah, you go, but you can't uh, look or browse around or anything. You have to order online beforehand, set up a time to come in. The one in Sauge, like the one in Springfield, you don't have to do that. I'm fine with that. But if you don't order online first, you end up waiting in line for like 90 minutes sometimes. That's what I would do. So it's always better because that, that's what I always wanted to do. I wanted to go in and kind of browse around. I thought that'd be fun. Check out like I did in Colorado. And then as soon as they open here, we get a pandemic. And So do you get the sniff and say, oh, I'll no. take this one. Uh, you can't do any of well, that Well, that's the thing about Illinois. If you go to Colorado and there's no pandemic, yes. But in Illinois... Um, everything is sealed already. So you don't, no one touches anything except for the container. Whereas in Colorado, they're literally putting it in for you. You can look at it. You can go, I don't want that one. I want this one. <clears throat> hmm. 
I would. I like the herbside delivery or the curbside delivery for uh, a pot dispensary. I like that. I haven't used it yet, but I got to. I'm gonna get my indica and chill out. I'm gonna get indica. It's that good candles. little section of Sanjay. Somebody's like, "You're brave to go to Sanjay." It's the good section with the right next to the ballpark. <laughs> that little hundred yard. Right. I've heard about right the there. ballpark there. It's really nice. All right. And Bubba says there are two dispensaries here in Springfield, but there's soon to be three. Oh, my God. I could be wrong, but I think the two are the same company. I, I know the one on, on Adams, they're opening up the old Outback Steakhouse or something over there on uh, Dirksen, right off the highway. They're going to open that um, dispensary up. And by the way, Yellow Fury is saying black market is the way to go. Weed is Yellow Fury is the guy who is wanting to find ways to pirate our Friday show. Black market is okay because you pay a lot less, but I'm to the point now where I've learned so much and I just that I want to be able to like know exactly what it is and try different yes. strains and different, you know, indica hybrid um dominance and things like that. So I don't really do the whole like just buy a, a bag from somebody. But it's definitely a lot cheaper to do that. People. And Yellow Fury also hates masks. He wants black market pot, and he wants to pirate our Friday show. Fucker. All right, we should probably wrap it up today. Um, uh, it is Ray Lyle's Morning Disaster Monday edition. Coming to a close, let's thank our sponsor, Recontext. A proof is in a performance. Recontext, 670-1132. Call today. And uh, make your appointment to get a detail on your car. Uh, and Core Installation Furniture and Supply, 741-1079. Core Installation Furniture and Supply, 741-1079. They have uh, chairs, desks. They also have masks, sanitizer, and uh, gloves right now. So much stuff you can get at Core Installation Furniture and Supply. That's going to wrap us up today. Thank you so much, you guys. We'll be back tomorrow with another show. Uh, this is The Morning Disaster. See you guys at 8 o'clock in the morning tomorrow. So long. You better wake up, sleepy and get your fat butt. Out of bed, there's a man who got up at 4 a.m. just to play you Zeppelin and Pearl Jam. Raymond Light. a bit insane but you may find him a little idiotic but his is the only morning show you can say is really got it slam the door turn the key get on the road now with central illinois morning way to get down it's nasty it's dirty but it's oh, funny I can't believe it's raining again it's the raymond lido's morning disaster Bet's gonna get wet again. It's raining. Sean Bullen Scott. Herpes sores. Bodine's running down North Grand in his undershorts. Michelle will dwell on things colored pink and purple. They'll explain why Jim made a remake of that movie called The Black Hole. Slam the door, turn the key, get on the road now. The Central Illinois is morning way to get down. It's nasty, it's dirty, but it's funny, cause it's the Raymond Lytle's morning disaster. He's loot, he's rude, he's crude, but it does matter, cause he's the morning master of rock and roll and laughter. Raymond Lytle's morning disaster. 
Thank you so much for listening, everybody. That wraps up today's show. Stick around if you're listening to the audio stream. Your replay is going to start literally in just a few seconds. Uh, for Facebook, you wait a couple minutes. Uh, they'll put that replay up uh, very quick. All right? Talk to you guys later. Let's do it. Hey, kids, what time is it? <laughs>